What's going on, YouTube? Uh, coming to you pre-recorded on uh, Friday evening. Um, I decided to do an unboxing video. This is my first unboxing video. It uh, was not planned. Uh, I decided to hit up a couple of local fish stores about an hour away from my home. Uh, they were in uh, Kitchener, Ontario. I went to a store called Aquariums by Design and uh, the Big Owls Aquarium Services there. I'm not too sure how many Big Owls Aquarium Services are uh, in the States, as I know most of you guys are uh, in the States, but I know they have a large online presence down there. So up here in Canada, they're kind of the big warehouse store, uh, the go-to place uh, for, you know, something cool and interesting. Um, but what I've decided to do here, as you can see, I bought a little more uh, fish than I expected tonight, so they decided to give me a box. And maybe I decided never to do an unboxing video because everything I ever got came in a bag. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name off and show you guys everything that I purchased tonight. You guys know I like to document more uh, individual species with my videos and maybe, you know, some nice show tanks. Um, I'm not one usually doing like an unboxing video or I don't, I also don't talk too often in my videos. But you know what, we'll see how this goes and uh, if it's a hit. Maybe I'll keep you guys posted every time I go out and I purchase something new. So I'm going to get into the, the box and we'll see what I pull out first. So with the receipt attached to it, I'm going to take a look. Don't mind me, I'm going to just change the focus on this uh, camera. It doesn't focus on its own. As you can see, what I have in here, it looks like I got some endler in there by accident. I have uh, what you can see as uh, panda barbs. Panda barbs are, you know, pretty common. You know, any major wholesaler out of uh, Asia and any wholesaler basically I'm sure in the States and in uh, Canada get them on the list all the time. But it's a fish that you don't see very often in the local fish stores. The reason why I purchased them is I've had them in the past and the males get insane red. It's almost like a strawberry uh, cream color. It's hard to explain, but again, provided that these fish lo live long enough, and I can put them into my uh, planet aquarium downstairs in the future, I'd like to obviously document uh, a video on them properly for everybody to see the potential of these fish. Maybe make them a little more common and popular in the hobby. But they're really cool. Um, something, again, that I'm looking forward to growing out and showing off uh, the potential color uh, once they're settled in. Let's go to bag number two. Oh, these are cool. They're not going to stop moving, but these are what they call Scarlet Crebensis. So as we all know, uh, the Crebensis is a very common species of cichlid in the hobby, but some people also don't know that there's tons of different species of cribs. So these guys are spazzing out pretty bad. Um, I'm going to put them down. But the scarlet crib is uh, its one that's caught my eye for a while. Uh, the males and the females are both like a dark chocolate brown, almost black color on the top of them. And uh, the females and males both develop, you know, some red to the lower body. Again, a very... And actually what's really unique about them is that they'll develop uh, some really nice blue iridescence in the cheek. And that's kind of what sets them off compared to the other common Crebenza. So again, love to do a follow-up video on these guys once they settle in. And maybe that can be one on your guys' uh, future, future uh, wish list. I got some fish in here that are not uncommon at all. I like the uncommon as much as the, or sorry, I love the common as much as the uncommon. As you can see here, it's kind of hard to see. They're very young. They're juveniles. Uh, they're yo-yo loaches. You can tell by the banding on top of the upper part of the back that it looks almost like little Y's. As these fish will fill out and get larger, uh, between those Y markings, they'll usually develop like an O marking. That's how they get the name Yo-Yo Loach. Really cool, very personable. And look at this, a very common red tail catfish. <laughs> I 
you know, it's uh, probably one of the most common fish that I'm keeping, but uh, I, I have a thing for red tail cats. You know, the whole labio uh, species, they really, uh, they really interest me. And again, a really nice large red tail shark, you know, midnight black with that red tail. Very, very attractive fish. This was one that looked to be in quite nice shape. And again, will be something I'll introduce, you know, with my cichlids once he's uh, settled in and obviously quarantined. This is the reason why I went to uh, Kitchener tonight. It's going to be hard to see them in a bag. Like this, it's double bagged, it's quite foggy. But I'm going to show you at the end of the video quickly what they are. They're flame back. Uh, they're a Victorian, uh, a Victorian cichlid. The locale, I'm not 100% sure on unless I spoke with uh, the breeder. Again, these were just local bred. But the reason why I picked them up is that people, again, will ask me if there's specific species that I'm looking for. There's never really anything that I'm looking for, you know, in particular. But if I see something that is exceptional quality, it's very hard for me to pass up on. And at the end of the video, I'll show you some that I purchased maybe a month beforehand. And you'll see exactly why I drove the hour tonight to pick up another 10 of them. What we have here is one of three sunshine peacocks. Real, real nice looking males. As you can see here. It's hard to kind of focus with this camera, but you'll get a very good idea. I love the sunshines that show obviously a lot of yellow and a lot of blue to the cheeks. There's a good chance that these came uh, out of Southeast Asia. Um, probably line bred. Um, they don't look juiced. You know, these are, you know, five and a half inch males, so they're pretty much all colored up. But I could not refuse buying them based on the price. I've been looking for some nice sunshines. And at $24.99 a piece, I bought three of them. That's a real, real good deal. You know, sometimes you'll see nice large uh, peacocks fully colored like this, ranging anywhere from 40 to 60, sometimes 70 bucks. So this again was a great deal. I bought three of them. Obviously they're gonna go into quarantine, but they'll probably end up into my 120, maybe in a month uh, from now. I gotta remove a couple aggressive mambuna, but they should settle in quite nicely. Hey, hey, I had to pick these up. <laughs> these are Maison Reef Zebras. This is a fish, including with uh, my Dovi downstairs, it's kind of given my uh, channel some popularity. Maison Reef are just incredible Mambunas. I seen these, uh, I asked the guy how they got them, because in Canada, they're pretty uncommon. I, I, for, for a while, I thought I was maybe the only person who had a breeding colony. Um, but he told me that they were not ordered in locally or purchased locally. So they must have picked these up from one of their suppliers. Um, again, I'm not too sure. It could have been Old World or something like that out of the States, some Florida farm. But again, uh, I was kind of interested to know if they were local because I thought maybe there was a chance that I had sold... Uh, the parents to these fry uh, but either way there was only four left I picked up the three the fourth didn't look so good but I figured you know what down the road this might be uh, again if they're not from my lineage they'll be a good line to introduce uh, to keep the genetics very strong Ugh. these guys hard to pronounce the name almost look like a tiger botia but they have the dots on them. I'd have to go down to the list. I'm a big fan of loaches. I've kept pretty much every kind of loach. I've seen that these guys have been quite popular, you know, in the last few years. You used to see a lot of tiger botillas, but now you don't see them so often up here in Canada. It's this other botilla. Uh, they call this Barrow Moretta or Barrow Morai botilla. Again, I might be just butchering it, but again, very similar in looks to the Tiger Botia, as you can see, and you know, obviously a very durable fish, so you know, I don't foresee any issues introducing these uh, 
down the road in with my Africans. I'll be interested to know how big they get. The Tiger Botillas get quite huge. I think I seen one once that was like 11 inches. And honestly, like, you know, like 6, 7 inches high. It was insane. Uh, I don't think these guys get nearly as large or are as aggressive. But, you know, like I said, I'll end up probably doing a follow-up video and uh, providing my experience along with my video to the YouTube community. Another bag of flame backs. I know there's two more. Hey, look at that. We're all done. Two more bags of uh, nice sunshine peacock per bag. Voila. Looking good, as you can see, for that price. Well worth it. And I'll just double check everything. Other than that, the box is now empty. And like I said in the video, I'm going to show you the flame backs that I purchased probably about a month ago. These cameras are so touch sensitive when it comes to uh, lighting. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit so you get to kind of uh, look at the natural color. This is not even fired up. The one that you see right in the middle, the dominant one, he's the ugliest. Look at the red on this. This fish, once he's settled in, he's honestly three quarters red. And good deep red. See this other guy? Looking quite good. I'll get him from another angle for you. Sorry, my uh, camera likes to shut off on its own sometimes. But as you can see, this was a fish that I just couldn't pass up on. Crazy potential. I have no problem. I'll sell some of the, you know, not as nice males down the road off. But I'd like to keep maybe three or four of the males, you know, maybe put one into every one of my show tanks. You know, I got a number of females, so you know what? If I can breed them and keep this beautiful red line of uh, Nairi, I believe it's a Nairi. You know, again, depending on the locale, I'm not 100% sure. I was kind of drew, doing my research today, and uh, based on the locales, I'm quite confused. So, other than that, that's my unboxing. Something uh, that I can work on all tonight. And, uh, like I said, you know, based on how this goes, maybe every time that I get something in that's different or cool, I'll maybe record it and uh, give you guys something to look forward to down the road when I document it with a good video. Thank you guys. Have a great night. Well, you know what, guys? I couldn't leave the video uh, ended on that note. I wanted to maybe just uh, give you guys a quick view of the sunshines. They settled in pretty much immediately. And as you can see, they got that good yellow and the good blue in the face. A lot of the sun sunshines that I've seen, either they'll have very good yellow and no blue, or lots of blue and no yellow. So... When I seen that these had a combination of both, and both uh, colors were excellent, I had to pick them up. And as you can see, they're doing quite well. Uh, they're pretty much eating 30 minutes uh, after I put them into the aquarium, so they're doing quite nicely. I decided to let them share this tank with uh, the Nairi. You can see the red coming out uh, of the backs on them. Beautiful fish. Uh, but again, everything now is in quarantine. Everything that was in these aquariums uh, has been moved over to another aquarium. All the rest of the fish that I uh, picked up tonight were uh, quite small. So I'm not going to go over and show you every individual. Um, but I'm going to show you these scarlet cribs. And again, bear with me with the lighting. But I, like I was saying, you know, you get these beautiful blue cheeks. And uh, deep red underbodies when they're fired up. Again, not a common Crebenzis, uh, but one that I'm definitely going to enjoy once they're uh, all settled in. So as you can see, everything's settled in quite nicely. I was told that these Scarlet Cribs are a little more aggressive than uh, the common variety. 
but if they get a little out of hand, I'll make sure I put something into the aquarium to keep them under control. So, other than that, everything's looking good. And on another note, it's kind of funny, but two days ago, um, half my electrical panel went out in the home. Uh, a tree outside basically hit the, the wire that was coming into the house, and I lost power in my fish room and, uh, you know, the aquariums uh, that I keep downstairs. So basically my fish went 20 hours without any oxygen. But as you can see, everybody's made it and everybody's doing quite well. So I'm quite happy about that. Once I started getting around the 20 hour mark, I was starting to get pretty uh, uncomfortable. So I'm happy to see everybody's doing well and uh, like I said, there will be a lot of other videos uh, coming up in the future and like I said I like to document all the different species that I uh, pick up and purchase so thanks guys for watching and uh, I'll keep you posted